Okay, welcome back to um, installing Roadrunner. And in the previous video, I kind of left you uh, in silence uh, <laughs> um, with the extraction of the whole uh, application. Now, you would see in the previous um, in the previous video, whilst it was extracting, that was only extracting the installation, which we're going to do now. So it wasn't actually the whole installation itself. It was only the extracting of the installation. So you know, uh, with take with that, you can you can uh, assume or you can you know know that okay, well this is pretty big. You know, this is a big program that we're gonna work with. So I'm gonna go and um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna go and load run a full install, and it's gonna install a couple of components on your computer, um, which it will start off right now. And whilst it's installing. Um, I'll just explain to you what it's installing. So uh, it's installing Visual C++. Now C++ is an application, is, is a software um, programming language that Microsoft uses for certain objects. And you would see that it's in, it's got the logo of um, Visual Studio 2010. So this this program gets connotated with that because Visual Studio, as you would know and would not know, is a program that we use uh, to do the actual coding. So it just says, well, warning, this computer program is uh, protected by copyright laws. So make sure that, you know, you're not going to infringe the copyright laws uh, in any kind of way. So uh, read through the uh, license agreement uh, form if you would like to. It's got different languages there, so it doesn't really give you an excuse not to do that. So uh, it's going to ask my name. So I'm just going to leave mine as private and uh, private. And I'm going to click next. And I'm going to go and install Load Runner, and it's going to ask me uh, confirm installation. I'm going to say yes, and it's going to start with the installation uh, process of Load Runner. Now, this normally um, takes a while, or it does not, depending on what uh, your computer has or has not. So it also comes with an installation guide that you can use. So the installation guide. Is the same one that we had a look at on the uh, on the um, on the website and the previous video. So it just explains to you just in more detail. Uh, it's not 100% the same, uh, but if you go to table of content, it just says uh, before you install installing Road Runner on Windows, installing Load Runner um, on Linux, uh, and that kind of stuff. So uh, that is important if you want. You can read through it. Important things. Uh, which I've already showed you, and we, what we will go through uh, during this uh, during this video. So um, you would see that it's copying new files. Uh, whilst it's copying new files, I want to show you the README as well. I just want to show you what all the different things is that you come with, and it shows you HP Low Run README. So this is just all about HP Low Runner that you can um, go through and read, and it just explains to you, like for instance, IP version 6, uh, .NET Framework, Ajax, uh, Windows 8, you know, there's a couple of things that you can go through uh, on your own time. So uh, definitely something to look at. And then you get your support link. And I like the support link because uh, they spend a lot of time uh, getting that, getting the support done for this. Uh, this is still on their very old design, which uh, kind of sucks, but hey. so. Um, with this software support online, uh, HP actually gives you support, but this is more in the support form of some stuff that does not work, um, rather than some, rather than you don't know how to work it, right? So definitely, um, you know, definitely if you have trouble installing or trouble in what kind of way with your HP software, uh, you would uh, definitely go there. Other than that, you will go to the um, to the other site. Which is uh, the this one that we that we came from? I'm just gonna close this old site of HP. It's uh, kind of strange that they haven't updated it yet. So whilst we wait for this installation to to take place, um, Whilst we wait for this installation to take place, uh, we can kind of have a quick recap of what we spoke about in the previous videos. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to kind of, you know, put emphasis on how important um, 
how important uh, software testing is in performance and, and, and functional testing. So we know now that there's two kinds of testing. There's performance testing and there is functional testing. Uh, performance testing is more um, in, in the midst of understanding uh, the performance process regards to uh, how the program works. And when we talk about perform performance, we can talk about uh, load testing. We can talk about, you know, um, we can talk about uh, stress testing and that kind of stuff. So it is definitely, definitely important and to remember that, you know, there's, there's performance testing and there is, um, you know, functional testing. Under performance testing, you know, we can get tools that we can use to do the whole uh, performance testing in essence. And that performance tools are, of course, uh, like Roadrunner, like we said, and like we're recapping right now. And Load Runner is more a load testing tool. And load, to load testing is just a form of, you know, uh, mimicking the number of um, users that actually use the program. So, um, you know, it's the simplest form of uh, performance testing. Load testing usually conducts and understands the behavior of the system. Because remember when we do performance testing, we look at how the model works rather than how the model looks like. Uh, I've just got one thing there that I need to approve for Load Runner. So if you get this, it's just your firewall, just allow access. I'm just gonna click there. Uh, where were we? So we spoke about load, load testing and um, you know, low testing is more a thing about you know uh, the the expected number of uh, application users that will actually use, for instance, your site. So it will it will see okay uh, when it's got a general amount of fifty users, and we'll go okay, um, you know, it's working fine with fifty users. And that's what we're going to do with the script and and load runner. We're going to set up a load, and you can actually go and set up a stress test as well, right? I'm going to hit finish. And I've just had finish on mine. I'm not sure where yours is as well. You can probably pause me if, you, uh, if you're if you still waiting. So I'm just gonna scroll and I'm gonna go to, oh, I've heard something, something here. It says Load Runner has been successfully installed. Load Runner Service Pack 11.5.2 is now uh, installing. This may take a few minutes. So now that you've installed Load Runner, now we need to go and install the pack of Load Runner. I'm just gonna, we're going to install that in a bit as well. So when I go and get this. So let's get back to what we've chatted about, the recapping that we're doing. And whilst we're waiting for this to install. Uh, so low testing in essence, as we, as we said, you know, it's, it's more about, you know, uh, having the general, having the general um, everyday use of, let's say, the website to go onto your, uh, onto your site. So that's low testing, right? So um, it all. So what Load Runner will do for you is it will actually monitor it for you, and then it will, in a form of a script, it will uh, you know give you the results or whatever. So that that's the one thing is low load testing. The next one is stress testing. Or stress testing is normally used to understand the limits of the application or program or software or whatever you are testing, right? So stress testing. Always remember that you know it connotates as to what is the maximum. That's why it's called stress. So um, that's definitely stress testing. The next one is soak testing, also known as endurance testing. is usually done to determine the system can uh, sustain the continuous expected load, right? So you get load testing. Okay, that's fair enough. But let's say uh, we do this every single day, right? So we put a thousand users on a website every single day. Let's see how the website's going to handle that. How's the database going to handle that? How's the new HTML5 module going to handle that? So that's definitely soak testing, um, and this also ensures like through output of uh, response time uh, of your website doesn't get slow, doesn't go fast, that kind of stuff. So that's definitely soak testing. Uh, now, other thing is uh, we spoke about as well is spike testing, and spike testing is done by suddenly increasing the number of load generally uh, generated by something like Roadliner. So you would go and you will suddenly spike it up. And when you do that spike, that's normally when trouble happens, right? That's normally where you get a stress. So spike testing and um, stress testing, two different things, yes. But in essence, it's kind of doing the same thing as well. So it's one of those things where it's exactly the same, but totally different <laughs> kind of thing, right? 
where spike testing is a sudden load. It's suddenly 2,000 users, where, where stress testing, in essence, can also be something that gradually works its way up, right, to 2,000. Let's say our normal users are 10 users uh, per day on our site, right? And now, all of a sudden, we add, like, in a second, we add 2,000 people that's going on our site, logging in our site at the same time. What is our website going to do? Is it going to crash? Is it going to sustain itself? So what are we doing? We're doing a spike testing and we're doing a stress testing. We're doing that at the same time. Now, let's say we want to keep that for the next week. We want to keep 2,000 users, keep on logging in, keep on logging out, keep on whatever it needs to do. We want to do it for two weeks. What are we going to call that? What are we going to call that? Soak testing because it's, um, it's, done for, it's done like an endurance test for a number of times. How long has it been doing this? Uh, it's been, we want to do 2,000 users for the next two weeks. How is our website going to sustain that? Now, I'm just saying 2,000, you know, uh, theoretically speaking, right? I'm just giving an example. But that's how you would go about this, right? You would go, okay, uh, stress testing. Stress testing would appear in sequences from 10, 20, 50, 100, 200,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, and it goes on. That is stress testing. That's adding more stress, where spike testing is zoop, going right up to 10,000 from zero. So that is definitely one thing to, to consider and one thing to understand. So guys, we're just recapping whilst installing. I think it's quite important, quite, you know, um, it's definitely there. We definitely need to understand it. So the next thing that we, we chat about is, uh, is configuration testing. And configuration testing, rather than testing the performance from the perspective load, Tests are created to determine the effects of configuration changes to, okay, to the system components of the system performance and behavior. A common example would be experimenting with different modules and load balancing. So let's say, uh, for instance, you know, we have a Drupal site, right? We've got different modules going and um, we're at the stage where we're doing the testing and we're going, oh, okay, this is working great, right? This is doing its thing. Um, but it's getting slower. Why is it getting slower? So we've done the load testing. Yeah, that's working great. Okay, cool. We've done the stress testing. Huh, you know, the site can do better. We've done the soak testing and we figure out the more users we have, uh, you know, at, at, at endurance time, the slower the site is going. So now we need to kind of go to configuration testing because we need to go, okay, this configuration testing is doing my head in. 